Anyhow, great to join you. It's a busy Saturday, but I wanted to take time to hook up with all you folks. Uh, I've spent my career pushing for science-based solutions to tackle climate change. Uh, we need to respect science, embrace it in Washington, and uh, not uh, kick it aside. Uh, and since joining Congress in 2009, I've seen firsthand what can happen when the federal government invests in clean energy innovation. We've seen uh, revolutions, uh, revolutions in batteries, in solar, in wind, and several other technologies um, because of the federal government's support for entrepreneurs and innovators. And now we need that same sort of commitment for the next generation of technologies, direct air capture, clean hydrogen, and uh, even offshore wind. These are the solutions that are going to help get us over that finish line to a net uh, zero economy. And because they are new and because they are emerging industries, federal involvement can ensure that we get them right uh, from the start by requiring projects be developed responsibly with robust community engagement and certainly strong labor and environmental standards. Uh, that is the benefit of having the public sector partner with businesses, with NGOs, and certainly with academics on these cutting edge industries. For carbon removal in particular, uh, I want to stress that even under the, uh, even under the best of circumstances, uh, we will not be able to reach net zero without some order of major, major reductions in emissions. But if we do not start to develop the technologies that we will need for that last 10% of decarbonization today, they will not be ready when we really need them in the 2030s and in the 2040s. CDR is also the only way for us to address our historical emissions. And I believe it is our responsibility to invest in, um, in removing, removing those emissions to reduce our impact on our uh, global neighbors. This is aligned with the most recent IPCC climate mitigation report, which laid out the tools we have to address the climate crisis. It shows us that we have the technical tools to economically reach a pathway that limits global warming to that 1.5 degrees Celsius. As the IPCC also laid out, while our largest um, focus should stay on mitigation, carbon management solutions like carbon dioxide removal, or as we refer to uh, as CDR, uh, are an essential part of a realistic pathway to what is a sustainable planet. I want to clarify to differentiate between carbon removal and carbon capture. The carbon removal technologies that I'm ad advocating for are sucking carbon from the ambient air that may have been emitted decades or centuries ago. So quite different from carbon capture being bolted onto a power plant's smokestack. I know the effort to fix our climate and lower CO2 in the atmosphere is well aligned with the mission of the foundation for climate restoration. And we're proud of that. Uh, and we're thankful for your partnership. We know these technologies will be necessary to reach our collective climate goals. And I want to talk a little bit about how we at the federal level can make certain that CDR technologies are ready when we need them. Many different removal technologies, such as direct air capture, are very promising, but they're also new and quite expensive. They need to scale massively and they need customers that are willing to pay for this service. Private commitments have stepped up amazingly, but in the end, carbon removal will need federal policy intervention, I believe, to scale it to where it needs to be. So I'm very excited that DOE is moving forward with developing GAC hubs with funding from the uh, bipartisan infrastructure law. And building upon that investment, Congressman Scott Peterson and I have recently introduced the Federal Carbon Dioxide Removal Leadership Act. This bill is H.R. 7434 in the House. And I'm very happy to report that Senators Chris Coons, as you mentioned, 
and Sheldon Whitehouse have introduced their version in the Senate of S-4280. These bills were put together with the input from dozens of incredible stakeholders who are experts in the technology and the potential impacts of CDR. The bill is simple. It requires DOE to pay for the removal of a specific number of tons each year. We have seen governments at the federal, state, and even local level use their purchasing power as a large procurer to help advance other technologies. Just as we are pushing the federal government to buy large numbers of electric vehicles and low emission steel and cement, uh, procurement can also be used for these carbon removal technologies. Under our proposal, over time, the number of tons goes up and the maximum price DOE can pay goes down as a way to continue to drive cost reductions. DOE is also required to follow best practices for monitoring, for reporting, and for verification of removals and prioritize domestic jobs, environmental justice, which is important, and innovative technologies. And DOE must select projects that minimize emissions, support innovative and diverse technologies, maximize job creation and economic opportunities in the clean energy transition. It also prioritizes robust public engagement and requires mitigation of environmental, public health and environmental justice impacts of any CDR projects. This bill would guarantee demand for these critical climate solutions, which will help jumpstart the industry and provide that long-term certainty at significant scale. And because of all these considerations, uh, considerations that I've listed and more, it would also help make certain that we're building the industry right from the very start. DOE is great at fostering innovation. I have great respect for the agency. And I believe that by empowering them to do what they do best, we can secure the future for the CDR industry in this country. We can start the process of restoring a safe climate while creating hundreds of thousands of U.S. jobs. And finally, I want to express my appreciation for the work that all of you do as advocates for a sustainable climate. Our work in Congress would not be possible without organizations like the Foundation for Climate Restoration and all of its splendid volunteers pushing us all to stay accountable to our constituents, to future generations, and certainly to our planet. Your support means everything to me. So thank you so much for all that you do. I really appreciate your support for this bill. I know you can be a powerful voice to convince other elected officials to not only support pro-climate, pro-clean energy legislation, but also to prioritize it, which is important amongst the many issues that come before us in Congress. We all know the cost of climate inaction is too high. Standing still, st status quo is taking us backward. And CDR can have an important role in our fight to decarbonize. With your help, we can make certain this vital piece of the puzzle is in place when we need it. So I thank you again for the, uh, for the opportunity and again, for the leadership that the organization is showing.